Hello everyone, my name is Rajesh Chatterjee and this video we're going to talk about Salesforce integrations, right? So uh, this is going to be a little long uh, playlist because integration is a very big chapter. What I'm planning is, you know, we will have some uh, basics, theoretical knowledge first, like what is integration, what is API and how, you know, the systems talk to each other, right? And then I'm going to show you uh, by writing the code, right? How you as a developer can do this, this you know, integration job end to end, right? You have how you have to write code, how you have to test it, all this thing we're gonna explain in this series, okay? All right, so let's get started with this journey. So first of all, let's understand what is integration. Why do you need this integration in first place? See, Salesforce or uh, or any software in that matter, right? What is software? What is IT basically? Software or IT is something which helps the business right if if suppose there is a business right small medium enterprise whatever every business needs to have a software in place or else like that that you know days has gone when you know we used to write things in pen and paper and we used to remember things right now things are going digitally right so software is nothing but you know <coughs> it, it basically helps the business to maintain their data in the different different system so whenever you you go and 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 see the architecture for you know software architecture for any business right you might see that there are multiple system involved it's not that you know they're using only one one system like you know salesforce that's it no the business would be using a different different system uh, you know to to manage their data that's what the softwares are right that that's what the software is doing in the business so for an example let's say you know there's a company there's a uh, you know a car dealership company right and, and and which which is actually giving dealership to all their you know distributors like whoever is one you know going to take the distributor they're just selling it right so they might have like different different system in the sense let's say they have a you know crm system which is salesforce they have a marketing system they have a order management system right they have a erp where you know the erp is supposed to you know get the data of the customer from salesforce on and off and then process it in the erp correct so when you have multiple different different system involved right and, and it's very important that these systems are should be integrated with each other tightly what does it mean right if you see a customer journey right normally a customer journey is basically where the first the marketing thing happened and that's not necessary that customer will always use salesforce marketing cloud right they might use some other system so from the marketing that whatever system they are using the marketing uh, team you know send the lead which comes to salesforce right from salesforce the customer journey happened and then once the customer onboarding is done right the next step is let's say the the uh, the, the order order needs to be placed and that is happening in the, some other system and then finally it's coming to the erp and erp basically closing that particular deal so if you see that journey right there are multiple softwares are involved here right and and the customer data which was there initially in the marketing system and then it came to Salesforce system and then when it went to the auto management system and then it went to the ERP and closed it, right? So same customer data is actually flowing from one system to another system, then again going to another system and then finally it is getting closed, correct? So see, uh, it's not possible that every system should have a record of every single data, right? For, for That's why that's why you know, CRM is basically capturing the customer data. Correct. Your your ERP will have the ERP related data. Your marketing tool will have, will have the marketing, uh, you know, just the you know raw leads data. That's it, right? So, not necessarily that every software should have the the details of you know uh, everything together, right? So, few data should be there in system one. Few data would be there in system two, system three, system four. Correct. And the integration is the process through which you connect the system with each other. Integration is the process through which you make this you know different different system talk to each other right so salesforce is is fortunately it's a very easy to integrate system with any other systems right when we learn that salesforce integration right we will understand that you as a developer can integrate salesforce with any software okay that's the benefit that we have and it, it's not that tough right i mean as i said like salesforce is a cloud product and most of the things is is been given to you as ready-made thing right you just have to know how to use it correct so now the question is, when you have two different system, let's say one system is Salesforce, another system is SAP. Now, now the SAP architecture is whole different than Salesforce, right? Or maybe there's another um, software which has been built in Java, right? So that Java application versus Salesforce application, the whole architecture is different. Now, how these two systems are talking to each other? This is where the application programming interface, which is called API, is coming into the picture. 
So what is this API do? Let's just understand in this way, okay? I'm assuming that you guys know here um, know what is Apex class, right? We have already covered us, you know, Apex class in so many videos. So, so have you seen one thing that, you know, uh, inside your Salesforce org, let's say you have two different class, Apex class, and you have like, you know, a multiple method inside these two class. If you want to call one method from another class, right? If you want to call a class method from a different class, how are you going to do it? Class name dot method name. Easy, right? If you put class name dot method name, you can easily call the class from a trigger from anywhere. But think in this way. Let's say you have that class, the business logic written inside Salesforce, right? And you have to call this particular business logic from your Java application. Do you think your Java application can actually access your FX class? It's not possible, right? Now, how this particular business logic that you have written as, an, as a developer inside your Salesforce org can be invoked by the Java applications. This is where API is API or, or web service is coming into the picture. Okay, so web service is nothing but it's making, it's actually making your, your business logic that you have written inside your Apex class public, right? So that it's a process to make your business logic public so that any other system, right? <laughs> when I say public, it's not that any system can call, there is some authentication process uh, there in the middle, but web service or API is something is a mechanism through which your business logic is being exposed to uh, the, the third party software, third party system could be anything, right? So through this API, you know, these systems are talking to each other and, and a Salesforce is, is very, very much comfortable with something called REST API. So there are two kinds of API. Normally there are two kinds of API, but now, you know, there are different, different APIs are available in the market, but basically Salesforce, you know, most of the jobs that you get to do as a developer would be done through a Salesforce REST API. We're going to have a detailed uh, video on SOAP API as well, but, but this session, we're going to talk about only REST API. Okay. So API is clear. API is the gateway through which the Java application, the ERP system, the whatever system is actually accessing your business logic that you have written inside your Apex class. That's called the API. So API, we have to write as a uh, developer to expose the business logic that we have written. Okay, now the good news is this, right? Salesforce, because it is a product, right? Many APIs are already been given to you. You're getting me, right? So, uh, you know, in the next video, I'm gonna show you what is called standard API. So every object, most, more or less every object, there is a standard API that Salesforce has given to you. You don't have to write single line of code to create an API. If in case uh, the Java application or the ERP system wants to just create a lead, update a lead, delete a lead in, inside your CRM, right? There's an API that Salesforce gives. I'm gonna show you in the next video uh, where to get the um, API, how to consume it. So Salesforce provides a set of standard API which can be easily integrated with any other uh, softwares, right? So you as a Salesforce developer, admin, consultant, don't have to work so hard to create that API. It's, it's already there, right? And I'm gonna show you in the next video how you can go and try to find that API from where you will find it, how you can test it, okay? So I hope this video, you got some idea what is, uh, you know, integration theoretically and right, what is API, what is uh, web service. Uh, next video, I'm going to show you the standard API. Okay. And, uh, you know, I'm going to show you something called Postman. Postman is something that is like, you have to know, okay, without Postman, it's very important to do the, you know, integration job. So I'm going to show you in the next video, what is Postman, what is standard API, how are you going to find the standard API, how are you going to test it out? All right. So see you in the next video. Thank you.